Okay. I'm going to show you how I process the um, F550 output. You can see here that it's showing ISO 3200. Doesn't look bad at this size without any processing, but let's make sure that it's, um, well, the way I like it anyway. So let's open it up and have a look. So, first thing you'll get um, is you'll get ACR coming up here. And um, I always start here. Of course, there are no other camera profiles. Sometimes you'll see that you need to tint the um, shadows. They're a little bit blue. Of course, there's blue light everywhere, so I don't think this is an issue in this particular image. You know, if I wanted to, I could just throw a tiny bit of tint, and that would flatten it right out. I'll leave it for now, just because I don't really care. Uh, enable the lens profile. Well, um, although it was a bit rocky a road, there is a F550 lens profile now, and you can see that really at uh, full telephoto you're talking about a small amount of manipulation get rid of uh, get rid of a bit of the uh, vignetting over here it's not too big a deal now um, I would normally go into sharpening but first we'll go and adjust any exposure we want now this looks quite nice actually um, obviously there's a lot of blown highlights so it's not going to do much about that and it's not actually necessarily a good idea to try to control it because it uh, mucks with edges a little bit for example you get a definite hexagonal feeling from the light uh, well you do anyway but it's it's much more pronounced when you cut back the brightness so it really depends on whether there's any detail to be recovered of significance I can take it a bit about halfway I get a little bit more detail on the floor I guess that'll be fine um, sometimes I like to muck with fill light to open the shadows you can see there's actually people in the background um, do we care not really so we take it down a bit I wouldn't mind seeing a peak of them but more it's more about opening the face up on the guitarist um, Roger's fine either way you see a bit more of his hair I don't know if you care but so here you see a um, little bit of face detail there. Um, he's a little bit op more open looking. His hair is a bit more clearly articulated. Let's check blacks here. Well, I can completely get rid of the black processing and I, of course, all it really does is move the black point out and uh, it does recover in the, you can see here in the histogram, it does recover quite a bit. This is useful. But, at the same time I could you know go in and and really start to darken up the shadows which isn't necessarily a bad thing either it's really a personal taste issue here the thing is later I'm gonna crank it I'm gonna leave it completely open right now and I'm gonna crank contrast anyway later because uh, I can come over here and and hit contrast as well but let's say I wanna open it up a little we'll just back contrast off a touch clarity well, it's up to you entirely. You can actually go for a glow effect. Come up here. Um, with these, I typically add just a touch of clarity. It just uh, It's basically local contrast. Saturation on these. Well, the lighting is kind of goofy. You've got blue light blasting across stage, and then they're obviously pointing an orange light at him. It's like in the movies. There's always blue and orange around to set some kind of a mood. So I tend to back off saturation just a bit you know to try to get the colors not quite so vivid I don't think they look that good vivid um, personal taste though if you want them crank you can crank them that looks a lot like a concert too anyway cranking it back a bit and right about there looks good vibrance is a control that is more friendly to skin you can you can add vibrance without really ruining things with saturation I mean it, it's more like a, a local saturation thing so uh, if you wanna if you want things to be reasonably controlled on saturation but emphasize maybe the contrast a little bit you get a little bit deeper blue here a little bit brighter orange but his face still looks a little more normal than if I crank saturation up so uh, let's leave it there not a big deal The key is now that I've got things looking kinda how I want them 
we'll see later. I'm, I'm planning on an 800 pixel view of this, so this isn't a bad estimate certainly a great starting point but let's look now we'll open this to 100 percent not 200 uh, and have a look so some people are gonna probably look at this and say oh my god that's horrible well yeah if this were a DSLR I'd look and say that's not great but this is a one half inch sensor at 3200 ISO at a concert and that is not bad there's detail all over the place and it's very clear but yes, there's a great deal of grain. So what do you do about it? Well, you don't have to do anything about it, really. If you take it down to 800 pixels, it's going to vanish anyway. But looking here, you can see that the sharpening has sharpened its features, but it's also sharpened the noise. So do you want the sharpening or not? Going to 800 pixels probably doesn't make any difference. But let's add the sharpening back a bit, get some crispness around the edge of the microphone, etc. But let's mask off the flat sections. So a lot of the extra grain disappears here, and yet you keep the sharpening. We can add a little bit of lumina luminance um, noise reduction. You have to be careful with that. You don't want to flatten everything out. Um, color noise reduction is already there. Clearly, Adobe has a very good algorithm for this. They're absolutely amazing, to be honest, because very quickly it takes care of the obvious stuff. Right there, it's already gone. If I go too far, though, it's going to smear everything. You do have to watch that. You can't just crank it up. It's actually not bad here, but I've seen other images where it wipes the image. It's completely destroyed. So keep it as low as you can. This has clearly got tons of chroma noise. looks horrible. And within, well, just about at the defaults, it's perfectly fine. There's no chroma noise. We've seen just the, the colors of the lights, which is what we should see. That is not a bad image for 3200 ISO. He's in shadow, so the strings don't show up well, but they do show up. You can see them. That's not bad for pulling detail out of shadows at 3200 ISO on a one half inch sensor. So let's open the image up. We have it in uh, CS5 in a moment. And the question now is is there anything left to do? Probably not, but let's see what we can do here just for interest's sake. I'll duplicate it so that this version will just go to 800 pixels. These are, these are actions I've created that makes it life easier for me. I'm going to hit Sharp Ultra Fine, which is coming out of um, PK Sharpener version 2. And you can see that what we have now is a pretty sharp version of this shot. Uh, um, there's light rim rimming this. It's not CA. It's actually blue light, as you can see so I wouldn't get terribly excited over that. The microphone here looks fantastic. Very clear. Um, so does Roger's face and hair and the guitarist. So that's perfectly fine. So what would I do if I wanted to fool around with this a little? Try by cranking contrast to touch? There it is. Wow, that's annoying. Um, just because of this, uh, the fact that I had to reduce my window considerably to fit into this recording size. Now you can see with the curves, obviously I have all the same control I had before, but, but this is actually very powerful. I can darken just the shadows here to make them go dark, and yet I can still see this guy and I can still keep his face open, and I can actually open, open things up even a bit more without opening the shadows, which I don't want to do. So that's actually kind of okay. Um, you can see the difference here. Do we care? Well, I kind of like the uh, the brighter version. Looks maybe a little bit more like how the concert actually looked to my face. So I'm gonna flatten that. 800 pixels on that one. Bring it up to 100%. Do an ultra fine sharpen again. So now what do I have? Okay, let's um. Let's compare the two. I don't know if anybody would really care, but I think I do prefer the second one. Obviously contrast is very appealing, but um, well yeah, I, I kind of like the second one. I mean obviously you're going to lose the detail on here anyway because the shirt's kind of blown by the, by the light that hits it, especially when it goes into one color. Typically, you start losing detail anyway. So that's that. Um, 
that's what it looks like as a uh, 800 pixel image and I personally think it looks pretty darn good for a 3200 ISO that's the magic of this new sensor it starts out as a uh, 16 megapixel image in RAW I did shoot it at DR400 in medium size but that's not what you get in RAW you get the full size I don't know how clever Adobe's algorithms are but it certainly looks like it pulls back enough dynamic range and handles um, certainly handles it at dynamic range quite well this is a white shirt he's wearing and you know it's not utterly blown out um, there's lots of detail here go Fuji anyway that's that from here I would just do a JPEG save blah 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 who cares um, well hopefully that was useful